Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods. Today we have a different unboxing video and setup. Uh, this is for the Anycubic uh, Wash and Cure Station. Um, currently I'm using a um, custom made 12 by 12 uh, wooden box with a, a hole cut in the top of it and I have my UV LED light inside of there uh, placed inside. Uh, it's routed properly and then I have that lined with uh, some uh, reflective tape so that way it gets as much uh, UV light around and then I also use a magnetic stir station with uh, two wash stations one for a pre-wash and then one for the final wash um, and basically that's what I use this thing though kind of puts that all in one so hopefully uh, it'll make it a lot easier for me and then just on top of it, I don't have to be going from one place to another to another. I can just do everything all in here. So let's get this unboxed and uh, let's see how it goes. All right. Package just like the Anycubic Photon. Toss that out of the way. So right on top here, we have our user manual. We'll keep that outside. We also have a power cord, a uh, probably a 12 volt power supply, 12 volt at six amp power supply. Put that over. And then looks like tools, their credit card, uh, not credit card, but their, their warranty card and everything. Uh, then their, uh, their quick check uh, pass um, and then a bearing as well. So that's kind of nice that they include an extra bearing because just in case it goes out. So go ahead and pull this out. Sorry for the loud noise. Okay. Yeah, packaged just like the Photon is. So there's our top. Let's put this off, off to the side here. We have another piece of foam holding that in. And let's get our base out of here if we can. Wiggle it just a little bit. Okay, so we have our wash bucket. Uh, this is kind of nice. We have our base uh, that's for curing. Then we have our, uh, our holders for various types of build plates. And we will test out uh, different build plates here uh, since I do have 12 different printers to test them out at. Um, looks like a little, uh, uh, what do they call that? Like a, a graded uh, plate. Uh, then we have our actual wash station, which this is what made me want to buy this, is this thing, this piece alone. Um, so my magnetic stirrer uses a same type of thing, but it uses a magnetic pill. I'll show you guys quick second so this is what I normally use so obviously this is going to churn out some more water or um, IPA whatever you're using than my current setup so that's one of the reasons why I wanted it plus I've seen in a couple videos that this does reverse as well so it'll go in one direction for a little bit and then it'll go in the opposite direction for a little bit. So it looks like we're all out here. I don't think there's anything else. We do have some uh, some box holders, I guess. So that's kind of nice. Their packaging is really, really nice on this. Let's get that up out of the way here. All right. We'll put that down on the floor so we can actually get the full shot of the Anycubic wash station. Put you down there as well. That. And you with that. Put all that stuff up out of the way. Let me go grab a, some couple of different build plates just so we have them.
All right. Just got to clean off this one build plate really quick. All right, so we do have three different uh, build plates here. We have one from the Nova Elfin 3D. We have our typical Anycubic Photon and Photon S build plate. And then we have, um, this is the Spark Maker, but pretty much the longer orange is very similar to this. So we'll, we'll get into checking those out here in a little bit. So let's take all of our parts out, we'll put these build plates in one section. Okay, and we'll hook up our power just so we have it. So right now, just build quality alone and everything. This is this is definitely a lot nicer setup than what I've been using. Uh, mine's just kind of rigged up the way that you know anybody else rigs it to to get up and running as fast as they possibly can. Got power uses pretty much the same power brick as the photon so let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in really quick and then we'll take a gander at the uh, the directions okay so to start off it just gives you a, gives you a basic breakdown of what it is so this is the wash and cure station touch button LED light for the control 40 watts of power, uh, 110, 220 volt, 50, 60 hertz. Uh, light is 400 newton meters uh, plus 365 newton meters. So uh, it has two different ranges, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I'll probably more or less use the 405 newton meters if it allows me. Um, then it has three different time modes, two minutes, four minutes, six minutes. Uh, machine size is 220, 230 by 370, so that's the entire build volume. Uh, well, not build volume, the entire volume of the, uh, the whole machine. Uh, wash volume, so that's the most important thing, is 115 by 65 by 165. And then we also have a max curing volume of one, 140 millimeters by 165 millimeters. Total weight is 5.7 kilograms, so that's, that's pretty light. Um, as you can see, there's the frozen uh, Sonic Mini. This is five kilograms, so it's just almost a pound or a kilogram heavier than uh, than that. So uh, definitely a, a nice solid uh, solid base. Uh, so we have blue, which is time mode, red, which is idle, and green, which is working. So those are our LED status. Uh, we have our safety instructions, Facebook page, YouTube channel, Anycubics website basic breakdown of how everything you should use. Uh, we're just gonna kind of dry run it here. We're not gonna actually set it up because um, I don't actually have any prints that are ready to go except for one that the build plate is pretty much the size, the height of this entire Z. So it's not really gonna work very well uh, for this. So uh, the UV lid blocks 99.995% of UV light and plays a protective role. So that's kind of good. So always make sure if you have this in sunlight um, that you have the protective UV um, uh, cover on it so you don't pre-cure your, uh, your model. Uh, so we have the adjuster adjustable platform holder, uh, another platform holder, so it's kind of like an extender. The curing table, stainless steel bearing, if so an extra one. The stainless steel wash basket, which is very, very nice. Mine currently has a printed one, which it works, but it just, like I said, the, the flow is what I'm really, that's that's my main thing is how good of a flow. And maybe I'll just bring over my other station to, to do a side-by-side -side comparison of it. Um, so user manual, toolkit, power adapter, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much all your, your standard stuff. And then it goes through on basically how you should um, place this all in. So the other, so two, two things I'm mainly, um, looking for in this, uh, unit, which I will probably end up, 
I actually have another unit on hand that's going to be here sometime within the week. And I'm kind of 50-50 on whether or not I want to keep it as an extra one or, you know, sell it to somebody else because I, if I, this one does what it needs, I won't need it. So, um, so right now we're going to look and see what type of build plate setups they have. So let's go ahead and get this on. So it is magnetized. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. So here, let's let's offset this. We can. So as you can see, you see it moving. I'm not even touching anything. It's just kind of hovering over. So those are really, really powerful magnets. And this is this is on here pretty well. That's that's some powerful magnets. So um, if anybody's wondering, there is no like through and through on this. So this is very interesting. When they uh, designed this, they actually put, um, I forget the exact name of them, but it's like those brass fittings that kind of grip into it. It looks like a gear. And what you do is you punch it into the plastic, like you melt it into there, or in this case, they probably just uh, molded it into it um, or molded the plastic around it and basically set it in. So it's always on there. So it's a really, really good idea. Uh, to do that. That's that's something, again, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. So let's go ahead and just do some test fitment here. So we have our normal build plate adapter. So there, there is two of them, like I said. So you can have one that's really, really high up here, or you can have one that's adjustable, which is really, really nice. So that way I can have it wherever I want it. So what we're going to do, we're going to set it at its lowest point right now. We're just going to let it sit. So, and this is also kind of nice because it has like this little bar right here that holds it in place, not like a nut or anything that can possibly come loose. This is going to be kind of hard to, to loosen unless this, uh, these two bars here get um, a little uh, bent. But as you can see, you just loosen up that and then hold it down. And there you go. So that's one build plate you could put in there. Now, obviously, you don't need it set that low because that's that's pretty low. But what's great about that is you can set it and then readjust it once it's in there. Or you could just have it flowing as it is. So you want to keep one hand up here and one hand down there. So here, we'll just do this. We'll, we'll put it up at its highest point, make it easier looking. So there's an AnyCubic Photon build plate, all right? Here is a Nova 3D build plate. Unfortunately, that's not going to work very well because of the way that it is set up. But it does, does go down on there. So this one you might just have to keep a close eye on because it doesn't... the. Uh, the area where it's at. Now maybe we can rotate this to go on the other side. Maybe that'll that'll work a little bit better to our advantage. So it does kind of work. You just have to keep a close eye on it and make sure that like this isn't falling in there. So basically any type of build plate that has a screw on it will work. So like the spark maker does not work because there's no screw on the top of it. Um, obviously you could probably just hold it on there and then, you know, maybe add something onto it, but uh, evidently it doesn't even fit. So it's definitely a smaller build type. So here, let's take a look at, I have a Wii box here that has a quite unique build plate on it. Let's take a gander at this. And this one actually does have a uh, print on it. So the Wii box doesn't fit either. So uh, for anybody that's looking to do multiple printers on this, um, you will have to do some sort of an adapter plate uh, to extend this out, uh, which I don't think it'll be a, uh, much of an issue. Uh, we'll just, we'll have to look into that a little bit and 
you know, maybe just, just extend the, the V neck out a little bit more. So it is possible. And then, like I said, here's the higher one. So that one would basically be put on here. And that's how it goes. Now, obviously, since this is an AnyCubic uh, wash station, it's mostly going to fit the AnyCubic stuff. But there, uh, that's why I wanted to try different build plates to see if this actually works with multiple ones. And it kind of does. So, um, like my GTAC, my GTAC has a similar build plate like this, the GTAC DP200. So that will definitely work with this because it's literally the same style where it's a, uh, a standard moot um, rocking joint, I guess you could call it. So that'll definitely work. Let's get some IPA to set this up and see how it goes. So this is, as I lose the cap. All right. So let's go ahead and fill it. We're just gonna fill it up to about, uh, maybe about a thousand or so. So we're a little bit over a thousand milliliters. So I still got quite a bit. I could probably fill the whole thing. And uh, any cubic does boast that this will last a while uh, as long as we do this properly. So. That's why I might get a secondary machine. I might have a pre-wash station and then have our our standard, regular, ready to rock and roll station because um, if you have a pre-wash station, it's gonna it's gonna wash off all the resin off of it. And then when you put it in here, it's basically gonna make sure that everything's off of it. So um, I know it's a little bit overkill to some people, but it, that way it'll keep that one. So like, if, let's say I have this as a small um, set up here, then I can wash this properly and not have to worry about changing out the IPA on it. Um, because at the time I'm making this video, IPA is pretty much scarce everywhere. Uh, no matter where you are in the world, uh, what places you're staying, uh, it's pretty much impossible to get IPA. None of my local stores have it. Amazon does not have it. So, um, so saving as much IPA as you can is probably best. So uh, let's see here if it says any information. So it says recycling of washing liquid. Um, okay, basically it just tells you how to filter it properly, put it out in the sun um, and let it cure. Okay, so I do have two prints here that we're going to take a look at. We're just going to put the standard basket in here. So that works very nicely. That's like, that's perfect. Um, if I had that up to 1500 milliliters, that would be probably my normal uh, set for this. So let's go ahead. I think there's a turn on here. Yep, right here. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on, okay? And let's face this right here. And we're just gonna run it as normally. Hold on, let me, let me do the one thing that everybody loves seeing. Oh, I love that. It's the greatest, greatest feeling ever. Okay, so now we're gonna go, uh, it's in cure mode, so we're gonna go and wash mode. And we're just gonna go ahead and start it. And I think it needs the plate, the, the cover on it. From what I was told, this is a switched uh, ability. And that might be what this is. This might be an RFID tag. I'm not 100% sure. But let's go ahead and stop this really quick. And let's go ahead and put this on. Uh, what's nice about this is any cubic, well, that's going to be your front. Um, that's the problem that I had with the frozen and some other like longer, they don't really have a front to them there. You just kind of, kind of have to figure it out yourself. So let's go ahead and try this again. So it is pretty loud. Um, but wow, that is far superior than my wash station. Like my wash station does 
do a, uh, a kind of vortex, but when I have the graded printed piece on it, the vortex is basically unusable. Um, it does it to an extent, but since it's just that little tiny pill that's using it, it doesn't really work all that well. So we're using a two minute setting. Um, and like I said, you could use a two, four or six. Uh, most likely I'll probably just end up using six minutes for just in general purpose. Um, because I really like to make sure that this is washed, but I mean, my God, this is, this is really, really nice. So what it's going to do is it's going to slow down. So it's been a minute. It's going to slow down and then it's going to reverse, which is what really caught my eye on this because a lot of people are like, yeah, that's great. The magnetic stirrers work a lot better than ultrasonic cleaners, but they only do one motion. You cannot reverse it. At least I haven't seen one that's in a good price range that has a reversal. This, like I said, my setup currently was probably around a hundred bucks, maybe less. Let, let's just call it 80 bucks, okay? For double the price, you get this entire setup and this is a really nice setup. And like I said, it comes with uh, a multi build plate, which I can probably have something 3D printed, a newer L bracket to extend out to fit a Nova or my Wii box. And that's as simple as that. Like these are very, very nice to have uh, because you can use multiple build plates. So that was my big thing about it is that you can use multiple build plates and you can use um, you can use the uh, forward and reverse on here. So that is really, really nice to have. I really, really dig that. So let's go ahead and grab some prints. Now these prints are already been pre-cured, but I just wanna see what it looks like. So these have already been washed in IPA and they're still a tad bit sticky, at least to my knowledge. So you can see there's still some, some resin sitting on there. I know I shouldn't really touch it with my hands, but for the most part, it's good. And we're gonna wash my hands right after this anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on there. We're gonna do it for six minutes now. And then we're gonna go and start it again and see if maybe that'll help. Because like I said, while my wash station really does do its job, it doesn't do as good a job as this. This thing is insane. So let's, uh, let, let me keep that going. I'm gonna go and get my wash station. We're gonna do a comparison on this. I might have to get my extension cord. So one, one thing I will probably end up deleting on this is the sensor for this hood. Oop, and I stopped it. Uh, is the sensor for this hood. Um, and the reason being is I like to make sure that it's getting the right part where it needs to go. So I kind of like to jiggle the basket up and down so it spreads out the parts uh, while it's washing. So um, not saying that everybody should do that, but that's just my personal preference. So again, we're, we're gonna do a comparison test between my wash station, which is right here. It's basically a 64 ounce uh, little cup. Obviously this is three times the size, uh, double. Um, and basically we're going to show off pretty much the same amount of liquid, maybe a little bit less than my wash station here. And this is just an IntelliLab magnetic stirrer. So we're gonna turn on the magnetic stirrer and you guys are gonna see how it goes. So as you can see, it kind of vibrates the, the area pretty well, but compared to what this thing does, look, we're just gonna do a comparison test between the two and just show off how insane it is. So like this creates a little bit of a vortex and you can kind of see just a little bit of how much of a vortex it gets. So it only gets about that much of a vortex on this. 
or that thing is just, it's going. It's going all the way to the bottom. It's literally a, a vortex. So this is kind of close to a vortex. Now, if I take it out, take this part out, then we have a vortex and it works the way that it's intended to. But when you have that on there to make sure that you're not hitting the magnetic stir, it doesn't really work as properly. So maybe if I had a basket like this, it would work a little bit better. But again, the plus side to this is that it goes in reverse. So you could do it one way and then do it another way and it'll be perfect. So it's really, really nice. And you can fill this thing all the way to the max. So I do have a pretty big build plate for one of my printers um, called the, uh, the Hiea SQ3. So this is, obviously I can't put that in any of these because this is a pretty big build plate. So, um, you know, usually I have to dip it like that or I just end up taking the print off entirely. But that's what's nice about this is, as you can see, this build volume, if I print something on the entire build volume there, I'm pretty much good. Now, obviously, if I do it this build volume, the Z height, you know, it's a little bit smaller. Um, but if I'm doing like a giant action figure, like I did a, I did a Baron of Hell for a customer, and basically I can probably wash that all in this little unit right here. I just have to fill it pretty much to the maximum. Um, but I'm curious to know how well this does. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll pour this out and put some water in it and see how well it washes an entire uh, setup. So, and again, this is going in reverse now. So now I'm reversing the direction, the flow of the IPA. So it's getting even more. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stop that. It's more or less just to show you guys that it can be done and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and take this top off and we're gonna see how it runs with a full uh, maximum capacity of IPA. So again, we're gonna rip this off as best as we can and we're going to put that on our side here let that drip on our little thing we're going to put that off to the side transfer this over to a new bin and we're going to fill this all with water because like i said we're <clears throat> I don't really have too much IPA on hand, so I need to salvage as much as I can. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so now that we have a full thing of water, we're gonna take a gander and see how well this is. And we're pretty much right at 350 there. So we're gonna put our basket in here again. And then we're gonna run it. I'm just gonna set it for two minutes just to see how it goes. And hopefully 
we don't have an issue. We're going to go ahead and put our top cover on. And we're going to let it rock and roll. So let's see how well this spins this. So we should create a vortex effect even all the way up top here. So even at the top with a, what is that, 30? So pretty much uh, 4,000, is that? 4,000 milliliters, we still get a vortex effect. Now granted, it is not anywhere near it. It's more or less an effect like this has where the vortex only comes down to about uh, 2,000, eh, like 2,800 maybe even 3,000, we'll call it 3,000. So the vortex only reaches to 3,000, but it's still spinning that liquid. So the liquid is still doing it. And if you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it is creating like a miniature uh, funnel effect. So the vortex, uh, the actual vortex is not uh, pretty much reaching anything past 3,000, but there still is like a, a tornado effect where it's still going all the way down. So you are still getting that washable area on there. So this is a really, really powerful machine. Uh, definitely worth every penny. Right now, uh, as I'm doing this review, um, I picked this up at, for 160 from any Cubix website. Right now they're going for 179. Uh, and that does include free shipping. So that's still a pretty good deal. Amazon.com. Uh, has these going for $215. So obviously you get a little bit, you're going to spend a little bit more, but you also have that two day shipping. So this is definitely worth every penny in my opinion. If you're, if you're someone that has multiple resin machines and needs something that properly cures and washes your, uh, prints off, by all means, pick up the any cubic uh, any cubic wash station, because it is definitely way beyond what anybody really needs for resin washing but it'll make sure that you guys get this uh this washed up really 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 well even if you're not going to use it as a cure station the wash station alone is worth every single penny so we're going to go ahead and check out the actual cure station part of it i'm going to go ahead and take this off take this out Take that off. That's some heavy liquid. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the cover on this. I hate these covers, but they're a necessity to keep it from scratching. So one thing I did notice on watching a couple videos on this um, is that the UV cure light is not all that spectacular, to be in all honesty. And that's fine. Again, I'm more or less buying this because I wanted it for a cure station or a wash station than a cure station. It was just a bonus that it had the ability to do curing stuff as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to cure those prints that we took out and see if that'll work a little bit better. Actually, no, we'll, we'll choose these ones because these need to be cured. So this is black, same type of items. And basically we're gonna go ahead and set this up and get it to cure. And again, very simple. We're gonna turn off the lights for this one. Um, and then move this out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and set this to cure. And we're just gonna set it for two minutes and we're gonna let it cure. So again, it's, it does do two different uh, variations of UV. But again, the, the only downside that I see is that all the light is directed forward. So if there was uh, a modification that you can do to put LED strips inside here, or what I might also do is inline this entire case with reflective tape to kind of get that full effect and see how it goes. Um, I think that will definitely help, especially if you have reflective tape on the front here. It should basically start bouncing off and then bounce off the back and bounce off the sides. So with these small LEDs, it should work pretty well. 
Um, my only issue is is that with this entire cure station is that they need to they need to redirect some more lights to be more outward. Um, but other than that, like I said, alone, just the wash station part is worth every single penny because the way that it washes those prints are going to be insane. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, especially, if, like I said, if you're someone that's doing water washable, that's even better because you can wash those prints off very, very well. Um, so that's going to be really, really nice. One thing I will have to ask um, any cubic is if they're going to sell just those tubs. And if they do, then I might just purchase an extra tub um, from them and just keep one unit here and call it a day. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on the, on the curing aspect of this. Like I said, I, I will probably end up doing some modifications to this unit just to make it a better experience in terms of uh, UV curing, like putting some LED light strips all around here. And then also, like I said, um, basically inlining the inside of this with some reflective tape. And that'll probably much take care of any any problem that we have with, uh, with curing in general. Uh, so that'll be really, really helpful. So that's, that's about the only downfall that I see of this is that there's only one LED strip that, uh, that cures it. But again, going back to the whole wash aspect, yes, it is a very expensive wash station, but first, first off, it's a big wash station. Um, and it's a powerful wash station. So if you're worried about cleaning your prints for anything, anything in that aspect alone, it's worth it in my opinion. Um, I get it now because these are starting to raise in price. And once it starts getting past the 200, um, like if you bought it from anywhere in China and it's over $200, then that's where I start saying, okay, that's starting to get a little bit pricey. But uh, currently where I bought it at, which was 159 shipped, that was worth every penny in my opinion. Um, and you know, like I said, the, the, the downfall is definitely the UV cure. It definitely does not cure it as well as like my curing setup, but, uh, we can fix that with some little modifications. Like I said, we'll, we'll line the inside of it with some aluminum, uh, foil tape or reflective tape. And that way we can get the full effect of everything out of there um, and make sure that, you know, the UV is hitting at every aspect. And who knows, we might be able to get away with this single LED if we just do the alignment with aluminum tape or foil tape or reflective tape. Um, and that way, you know, this will bounce this way and then it'll bounce that way and, and bounce off of everything. And, and, you know, we'll see about that because... When I say that, I actually stepped down from a large UV light to a smaller one that uh, GTEC supplies. And uh, I, I basically had my big one facing down and that's pretty much it. It was, it was on, a, uh, on a little smaller base that was probably about the size of that the wash bucket that's on here. And it worked pretty well, but uh, you know, the UV light could have been utilized in a better way and I actually stepped back and did that smaller light and then I aligned it uh, 12 by 12 case with aluminum uh, or reflective tape and that thing is super duper bright and so I think this can benefit from that as well so what most likely will happen in the next week or so is I will uh, take out all the screws here align it with uh, reflective tape put it all down, uh, put reflective tape on here and here, basically uh, make sure that we take out all the, the areas here and on the inside as well, we're gonna put reflective tape. It won't look the prettiest obviously because we're, we're taking that nice pretty UV case and turning it into a reflective bowl basically. Um, but it, in terms of utilizing this UV light to be the best that it can be, I think that will uh, will definitely work out in the end. And if not, we'll just add some more LEDs to it and uh, possibly just a strip here, strip here, and maybe a strip in the front. And I think that would 
do it a hundred percent um she, we could probably even add a strip here and a strip here and that should be more than enough um and who knows maybe we'll we'll get a kit uh ready out for it but other than that guys um that's all i really have to say for this uh th this this is really really a nice wash station in general uh the uv part is just kind of a secondary so if you're looking for a nice wash station that's kind of like the end-all be-all for sure get this um it's gonna save you a lot of time it's gonna save you a lot of ipa a lot of money in terms of all that um and then just it, it it has presets on it which makes it really really like idiot proof to be in all honesty uh you just set it to whatever you're doing and it'll automatically start turning it the way that it's intended to so really really nice system um if you guys are interested in it i'll put some links below once this video is uploaded uh for the anycubic website as well as the amazon and uh basically that that's pretty much it if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns about this, please go ahead and uh, put them down below and I'll take a look at it and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. So uh, until next time, happy printing, guys.